start from page 141. So step 15, we're going to change the symbology for the other layers as indicated. To do so, we're going to click the current symbol under the layer in the content panel. So which opens the symbology pane and for each layer, choose the following symbol, symbol for the symbol gallery. So for wells, where is our wells right here we're going to choose is the pentagon pentagon p pentagon one two pentagon one okay and it changed it okay it changed let me move this and then fire hygiene, we're going to do diamond three. Diamond three, diamond three, diamond three, diamond three, triangle, diamond three. Wow, this is cool. But I don't see diamond three. Triangle. I don't see diamond. Oh, right here. Diamond three. Oh, that's cool. And then for water pressure zone, black outline. Water pressure zone. Water pressure zone. And black. Black outline. All right. And then we hover the. Uh, the symbol to see the entire name including the line thickness so this is okay all right then we're going to zoom to the whale layer right click on it and then zoom to layer so then we're going to save the project and it's a good habit to save often to prevent having to redo your work in case of a software and hardware malfunction now we're going to go to project and click save and close it out and then we're going to do is map x y point we can also have a standalone um, table um, in your project so that you want to convert into a feature class so our table is in data and this one the valves okay so we're going to drag the valves csv the valve csv to um the map and open it so we're going to open it and now we're going to drag it here and Resize the window, move it a little bit here. Right now, uh, this table is non-spatial. That is, it does not have a well-defined geometry as feature classes do. There is no shape field, so it cannot be displayed on a map. But it does contain spatial attributes in the form of x, y coordinates, which means that it can be easily turned into map, mappable data. So we go to school all the way to the right side of the table to see x, y field. It's right here, point x and point y. And close the table when you fit, uh, when we finish. And we're going back to the geo processing tool. Um, and bring tools so this time for the toolboxes we're going to expand so toolboxes we're going to expand the layer and table view layers and table view which is under data management tool and then we're going to layer and table view layer and table view it's right here and then we're going to read the top uh, tool tip for the make x y event layer tool so it says create a new point feature um, layer based on oh it's gone based on z and 
y coordinates defined in a source table. So if the source table contains z coordinates elevation value, that field can also be specified in the creation of the event um, layer, the layer created by its tool is temporary. So we're going to create temporary temporal temporary point layer using the x and y coordinates stored in the table. You will make sure it is properly placed on the map by importing the projected coordinate system. And then you can see the sidebar and it doesn't have the help thing anymore. The help environment, not the environment. Once you have created the event layer, you can export it to a permanent feature class. So the coordinate system here, we're going to do um, x, y table first, which is um, the uh, velvet CSV file x field point x and y field it will be point y. So um, layer name, we already have it and coordinate system, we're going to change it into Oregon. Um, so for the coordinate system, all spatial data has a, has a coordinate system, an important component of its spatial reference. So the coordinate system defines features position on the Earth's surface. Coordinate system can be geographic or projected. So a geographic coordinate system uses latitude and longitude to define the location of points on the surface of sphere or sp spheroid. A projected coordinate system uses a mathematical equation, the map projection, to transform latitude and longitude coordinates into Cartesian or planar coordinates for display on the flat map. Particularly for detailed analysis or editing, it is important for all your or all the layers to be in the same project coordinate system. ArcGIS employs on the fly projection, which means that it applies the projected coordinate system of the first layer added to all subsequent value, uh, layers. So for more information, we can just um, look the help topic later. Um, so now we are going to do is we are going to look for uh, not the uh, not the geographic coordinate system uh, we're going to do is for the projected coordinate system we're going to look is the NAD um, reference layer uh, I don't think it's state plane NAD state plane NAD 1983 we will choose feet international feet and expand it, NAD Oregon. Uh, is it north or south? North FIPS 30 yeah, feet, and that's the one. NAD 1983, state plane, Oregon, north FIPS. This one, all right, perfect. So it's under, uh, under projected coordinate system. Um, coordinate system, and we have a state plane, and NAD nineteen eighty three international for feet. And then to maximize learning, we're going to hover the information icon and re uh, the tip for it each. Um, it didn't show anything here. Um, for each field. So, and we have this. So, all right. So, the field in the input table that contains the y coordinates, and this one is the field in the input table contains the x coordinate. Instead of they doing how file and they um, they kind of give you this identifier thing, give you an info window uh, to read. 
uh, spatial reference, the spatial reference of the coordinates in the x, y fields defined above. This will be the output event layers spatial reference. And we're going to click run the tool and then, um, oh, and everything is here and it gave us message and it succeed, succeeded at Wednesday. Da -da -da. Okay, anyway, so now um, we can see that this layer is added. We're going to close it out, close it out to observe. So um, we can just do zoom to layer. And the color, maybe I will change it into um, the color, I just change it from here, um, lighter blue, so that it pop out a lot better. Um, so, here, with this valve layer selected in the content pane, we're going to click the, da the data tab, which is here, data tab. It's selected, I have to select it first, and then data export features. Um, and then in the geo processing panel, maintain the input and output path, but change the output feature class name to valves. We're going to do is change this into valves in uh, under valves. And then we're going to run the tool. Then the feature class is added to the project geo database and to the map. And then we're going to remove this layer from the content pane and change the valve symbol to circle four in a blue shade. It's done. Successfully, completely successfully. Um, all right, then I just go to symbology and symbol and it will be circle four. All right, circle four and then change it into what color, um, go to symbology again, and call, and then go to its property. All right, so in the contents pan, we, we click the default symbol for the valves in the symbology pan, um, symbology gallery, we select circle four and then we click property and change the, um, um, the, the property tab and change the color chip to blue shade. So blue shade, um, blue shade. Is this one blue shade? Which one is the blue shade? Okay, the blue shades and then 10, da -da -da, zero degree. All right, halo. Um, we didn't say halo. All right. And then we just leave everything as default and then click apply. So whenever you create a new data, it's best to create metadata. Metadata is a textual information about the data. So data about the data, especially before sharing. To do so, we're going to right click the data in the project pane and click view metadata. So um, right click on here, which data we're going to view. Um, a project tab appears in the, so we're going to click which one? We have to figure it out. A project tab appears in the display area and the new tabs are available on the interface ribbon on the home tab. Click add a tool, enter your tags, which facilitate data such as a summary of the data set and anything um, else you feel is necessary, such as data credits. When you are finished, just click save and then close the project pane. And this is the project pane. We're going to right click on it and view metadata. So it's right here. And I'm not, I want to, um, I want to, all right. So, and this is a lot easier. So, 
uh, I don't need this so that we could 